is on developing and onboarding services in Cord. Um, we're going to show you, um, we're going to start with a template service. Uh, we're going to show you how to modify it, then we're going to show you how to bring that up uh, on a running pod. Um, for this demo, sorry, interrupting. For this demo, your laptop, your big, we're not going to install anything in your laptop, but you are going to want to easily SSH from it and use a web browser. Uh, we assume everyone has that capability. Um, we're actually going to be using uh, cord servers that are installed in that box back there. We call that black box the orange box. It has 10 uh, blade servers in it. Um, I believe they're each independent. Each one of them has cord already installed. But this is the same as if you had installed it on a pod or if you had installed it on Cloud Lab. It's a full um, cord in a box deployment. So an example of a service graph and the types of things that have to be done. So this, this comes from MCORD. Uh, we can see um, lots of boxes here uh, for MCORD services and lots of uh, connections uh, between them. So if, if you are going to create a new VNF and onboard it, um, you would imagine you'll need virtual machines that are running your VNF. Uh, you'll need to network those together. Uh, you'll have to configure them by pushing config files um, inside of these uh, virtual machines. And you'll have to actually start your software. Uh, this is done through XOS services. XOS has a, has a complete uh, service modeling framework built into it. And we're going to show you um, some of how that works. So this is an overview of what the tutorial will include. Um, so we're gonna, you're going to start with your own VNF, and a VNF um, typically includes a virtual machine image. We've got one of those provided for you, uh, so you don't have to make an image of your own. It um, doesn't necessarily have to have your own image. There have been cases where someone has just used a generic image and then configured it in a, in a certain way that instantiated their VNF. Um, so we're going to assume you want to build an XOS service around that virtual machine image. Um, there is a model, actually several models in XOS that abstracts that service and makes that service available on the pod and makes that service available to other services. And there is a synchronizer that is responsible for taking uh, stuff out of the data model and pushing it into the VNF to configure the VNF. Um, we're going to onboard um, the new service that we're developing into a running pod. As I said, uh, we have running pods in that black box back there. Uh, we're going to run a Tosca recipe that will spin up uh, the newly um, onboarded VNF. We're then going to show you how you can use the XOS GUI to reconfigure that uh, VNF. And then we're going to show you how a development loop might work for actually modifying your synchronizer and redeploying your synchronizer. So each team, and... Can I ask questions? Sure. Why would you want to modify your synchronizer? Why would you want to do that last stuff? Well, this would be if you're developing, and you want to add a new feature to it, or you've got a bug. Okay, um, it's just the iterative development cycle, you know, modify, test, uh, revise. Each team, and you are teams of one because we have uh, plenty of resources, is going to get your own IP address that goes with one of those blade servers. <coughs> Thank you. Um, you will have to get on this network if you're not on it already. I assume everyone's on it already. Larry, this did change from yesterday because it was getting overused. So is everyone on the network? Anyone need help getting on the network? Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, um, when Cord in a Box comes up, it generates a random password uh, for the GUI. Uh, that's for security purposes, so we don't use a fixed password that someone can hack into. So we need to actually find the random password that was assigned to your machine. So you need to SSH into um, the IP address that's on your little uh, note card using the username Cord and the password Cord. 
I guess we didn't think that that might be easily hacked. It's <laughs> a demo. Yeah, it's a demo. Well, it's, it's only here in this room. It's not really yeah. live deployed anywhere. So if everyone could SSH in um, to their machine. And if you have trouble, uh, let me know. I can come around and help. So is this uh, is this uh, unique to the demo here, or would this be? This is typically but be what you do because it's Can always the password? it's always generating a random password. So we have to get on there and get it. There are ways to preset the password um, by either creating that file, or there's a variable you can set. Um, the creating the file is more reliable. So if you um, well, this is fine. I just want to. Yeah, it turned out that people were deploying these on Cloud Lab, and Cloud Lab didn't want them all to come up with the same same user ID and password. Went, on, went around randomizing a lot of passwords and, and stuff that could be exploited. Okay. Um, has everybody gotten in with SSH? Has, has everyone logged into the XOS GUI? No. Yes. Yeah, so you're able to, to cap your password file and Save this password. I got a problem. I can't see. You move up here. <laughs> no, I don't want to try to help people. I need to take a seat right here. <laughs> so, yeah, the second step was once you had that password. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, come on. Right. Focus. <laughs> Focus is not the problem. It's my eyes. We're just trying to outdo yesterday's Anton. <laughs> Um, yeah, log into the GUI. Again, using the same IP that you used up there, port 8080 uh, slash XOS. And then the password would be the thing that came out of that file. And you should see something that says a service dependency graph and should say cord in the top corner and it should say R cord in the bottom left. Your VNF orchestrator. Yes. All right. Oh no, it's up here now. What's the URL? Yeah. So I'm I'm going to do this as well. So, uh, your IP address colon eighty eighty slash xos. Okay. 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 To demonstrate that myself on my own machine, my machine happens to be on Cloud Lab. Um, Logged in.
Zach, how's everyone coming along? Uh, we have a winner. Okay. And, uh, and the they pass, come along. What's the password here again? We have a cat out of that. Out of that, out of that file. Big long random string. Should have just made that, that the password. Big long random string. Okay. Uh, too, too good. I gotta say the GUI is very to cache that come out of computer. Yeah, GUI looks good. If only Mateo would have been in the room for you to compliment the GUI. Oh, so that's the password. Mm -hmm. It's his thing. I don't know if it's functional, but it works. Oh yeah, it works it works very well. What is the, the technology is it based on? Ah. Well this yeah. JavaScript, but it's IP address. I, uh, he told me the framework he uses, but yeah, I, I can't. Okay, so here I am. Um, we're on the home screen. Yeah, you're on the home screen. So yeah, this, this home screen, it shows the service graph that's configured into um, this particular pod. So we've got a fabric service. Um, or we've got Onos Fabric and Onos Core. Those are the two Onos services we're running. It's address Manager Service, BTN, and the Fabric Service. Um, I think what we do now is we just poke around the, uh, the interface a bit. Fine grain tendency graph. Let's see if that... Yeah, that kind of shows how these pieces are connected together. So you can see, for example, the BTN Onos app. Um, it's using Onos Core, the Fabric Onos app is using Onos Fabric. Um, address Manager is connecting things to the public internet. Uh, we have no real um, data plane services installed yet because that's going to be the purpose of this demo is to uh, install a service. And I did want to show people how to do it. Well, there's two different graphs, the home page and the service graph. No, I'm on the fine train tendency graph, but everything is like on top of the lead. So yeah, to grab something that runs around us. Yeah, it's it. dynamic. Yeah, but still, why would I want to do that? Oh my god. I just want it to draw a nice thing. I think I want to point up one point down. I mean, I'm being told it's a D3 force simulation. That's what it is. That's how it's done. I would guess the thing is. And that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, our GUI guy is right out there hiding. Mattel. Yeah. D three four simulation. <laughs> that's that's just right away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's <laughs> the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's coming back. Yeah, we had a few moments to talk about. Okay, uh, there you got in. Oh, you're in. Okay. All right. So, did you have any questions for Mateo? Well, there was a compliment of how nice the GUI looked. Then a complaint about Then a complaint about how the GUI put everything on top of itself. Um, so what do you do to get the graph to be what you're doing? Uh, I started dragging stuff around. Yeah, you can drag them around. Uh, I started talking with Satan to figure out what it what it had nothing to um, let the operator find the position of the graph. How do you get it to draw the rest of the stuff? Um, go down to service graph. If you're on the home page, um, service graph is a different page. So there, then, yeah, it, dynamically. You know, in mine, it just it drew everything in a sensible place. Sensible? Yeah. But it must have some fuzzy, you know. Don't overlap. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to look. Yeah, it's, it's like a force simulation, so every node has gravity and they attract them. Can we put them in orbit? Probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can. In body simulation. All right, now what? So just looking at some of the other pages, for example, we can we can look at our nodes. Um, 
mass will auto generate a random name for our node. In, in this case, I got Carefree Snake. Spiffy. Some, someone should uh, hashtag that. I don't, that yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Spiffy Growth. Spiffy Growth, you know, Carefree Snake. So everyone will get, you know, a, a randomly generated node name. No, is it it in. Now, is this generated by the mass server? Or yes. It's generated by mass. Okay. That's the name of the um, yeah. machine running. The machine. Uh, right. Machine running. Uh, what is it? The virtual so, compute node. Yeah. It's yeah. The machine the, running yeah. OpenStack Nova. That yeah. Okay. It generates server. all those. Okay. So Docker generates names randomly. So is it the same thing? Or is yeah. So Docker generates its names slightly different than mass. It seems like Docker is always like an adjective and then a scientist name or something yeah. like that, where this yeah. just seems to be too... Just prevent to have yeah. uh, boring words, yeah. Yeah, they just, they just want to give you something that you can remember rather than just long random string. Um, and every, whenever we come across a cool sounding one, we, we send it to Slack and people, th this is where our uh, release names come from. By the way, we need to finish the boat on that. We've got a virtual tie. Oh, really? I, I'm coming yeah. to carry them. Declaring a winner between. I was for like angry scorpions or something. Yeah, you lost. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> the burrito one. Fable burritos. Fable burrito. There was one that was very popular. It was like the default. Yeah, I don't find the Sorry. Yeah, well, let me let me click on this. So, you know, if you wanted to look at a node, um, you can see some of the fields about the node. Um, I don't have any nodes. You don't have any nodes? No. Physical purposes still. Yeah, well, yours is not going to go very far then. Yeah. So, does yours not have? It says no data to show. Yeah, start over. Um, okay. I mean, maybe when we run no fresh nodes, it can come back. But no, okay, great. You're, you're a power well, user. Um, I you wanted to that? show uh, keyboard shortcuts. So the slash key, uh, which you can see at the top of the key binding, uh, will we'll open up this uh, shortcut panel. This is very useful because it's got um, lots of shortcuts that you wouldn't otherwise know unless you uh, bring up this little help yeah. thing. Yeah. Was the so, for example, um, I say again. No, the open stack is a different GUI. The Horizon yeah. GUI, if you're used to it, this is uh, this is we, we control open stack via the API. So that's what you're. Yeah. Yeah, we call this the XOS GUI. I would think. Yeah. It's official name. Um, so. One thing I wanted to show people when you're debugging stuff um, is handy to be able to turn on um, debugging in page. Browser. Yeah, it's one of the two. It's not the browser console. Is it, is it, is it like scrolled off the bottom? Yeah, it's, you should be able to scroll down a little bit. Uh, it's the one called models. Models sit down. You should be able to press A. A? Yep. Yeah, so we can close that back out. We hit A. Uh, we see that a debug uh, tab has appeared. And this is how you get to your, your sort of power user developer debugging stuff. Uh, clicking on the debug tab, you would see much more normally hidden information about the uh, about that particular node object. So you can see when that node was created, updated, um, some stuff about how it went through the synchro synchronizer, its uh, feedback state, all kinds of... Uh, Do you have another one? Is that one possible? It won't connect. It really can't connect to the Key. What's the user? And 
and Splash will bring up a little help panel. Yeah, I and saw that, but I don't see. Oh, there's a card. It should be like way down at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Open yeah. yeah. I think my browser just didn't have enough. Is it browser dependent? Hey, keyboard shortcut. Yeah. Well, it's like probably having a hard time recognizing Splash. If you are in the, if your focus is in the search bar at the top, it might. Oh, okay. Yeah. Click on Yeah. Help, help buttons. Yes. Uh, so moving forward, um, we're done with our little um, tour of the GUI, and we're going to look at uh, some of the containers that are brought up in Cord. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots of containers that will be brought up on a head node. Um, there is XOS Cord and um, service synchronizers, just like 20 Docker containers there. Uh, there'll be a couple Onos containers. These are all things that are, will be brought up inside of your head node. Um, OpenStack, there'll be a bunch of containers. Um, and Mass, there'll be a bunch of containers for that. There'll also be some infrastructure services like uh, uh, Docker Registry, Maven Repo, Console. Um, we have the Fabric connected to the Fabric switches. Um, we have a management bridge, which will connect a management network to all these containers. So now we're going to go in via your SSH session and uh, look at some of that container uh, inventory. So if you want to SSH to uh, head one, that is going to take you inside of the virtual uh, core head node. So just uh, so the DNS thing, head one? Yeah, just head one. From, from the node that you were SSH into. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so for, like in the core pod, we had to do that? Is in the core pod, the pod would just have a head node. This is, this is core in a box. So what core in a box has done is it's, it's set up virtual machines yeah, yeah. and it's created a head node VM, a compute node VM. But you're going to it from the big, right? From the development, quote unquote, development machine. Well, you, yeah, you're going to it from... Yeah. You know the machine so is it, uh, into the head node. Yeah, so on the physical, we have to get we can't get to the compute nodes and or unless we're on the head node. Right. So you're kind of following that same concept, right? Or the, yeah. Or, okay. That that works. That's the same way. Yeah. This is this is set up to you know as as closely as possible to mimic uh, the physical pod configuration. Okay. Um, so I was just going to have people type some of these commands. Um, CD opt cord profile, and then run uh, Docker compose dash p base cord ps. That should list all of the uh, uh, cord containers. So base court is a group. So um, the name of the the name. 
name of the cord deployment. And, and so Docker has a, they, they, I think it's, they namespace the containers. So. Yeah, so base cord was the name of our profile. Got it. So if this was R cord, it would be R cord underscore, and M cord would be M cord underscore. So for example, we can see some of these, um, the Tosca container, the UI container, uh, the Redis container. And if you wanted to, slides. Sorry, I kind of lost one back. Yeah, if you wanted to, um, you could do that with the other container. So this command would show you a list of uh, Onos VTN um, containers, a list of Onos Fabric containers, all of the mass containers. Um, and if you did this, you would see all of the uh, OpenStack containers. The OpenStack container is a little bit different. They're done in LXC instead of in Docker. So that's why we're using the LXC command down there instead of the Docker command. Uh, we are working on uh, containerizing OpenStack, so that will be changing at some point in the future. So it works in Docker? So that when you say containerizing? So we want to make OpenStack work in Docker right. so, that, so that we would be down to just one container framework, then we use Kubernetes. So it's just, it's, it's LXC versus Docker, and it's that that came prepackaged as a container as opposed to having to be generated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's something called Juju that sets up OpenStack. Of course, we've leveraged a lot of existing stuff to set up our OpenStack. Um, and that ex existing stuff did it its own way. Okay. Are, all right. We're moving on. Everyone okay with that? Yeah, unless you guys wanted to watch me list through the other containers. No. I'm assuming if, if you saw one, you could abstract what the rest would look like. Um, just a little tour of the directory structure um, that you're going to find in Cord. Uh, so there's going to be a Cord uh, directory, and then inside of that, you'll find the build directory and platform install. Uh, we're going to be running some stuff from build and platform install today. That's where you'll find most of the build system. Down here in orchestration is where you'll find um, most of the services. So orchestration slash XOS, this would be the XOS core, here would be the XOS GUI, and here is the XOS services directory where you would have VSG, VEE, um, Volt, uh, VTN, all of, you know, the whole alphabet list of XOS services you'd find in there. So if we went over here to our shell, We're on the head note. Yeah, I went back to the head note because <clears throat> I think that's where Andy did them from. So cord slash build. <coughs> you can see there's some stuff in there. Also cord slash. So we're in ops cord. No, in head note it, it comes in in just uh, the home directory. Um, you know, squiggle slash board. What's the, what's the absolute path that you're at? Well, mine is probably different because I'm Cloud Lab, where yours on the orange boxes. It's, it's tilde slash board. Yeah, it's tilde slash, slash board. Uh, and I did I did leave the head note VM. I'm back right, that was on the note of, itself. So you were back on the the bell machine. Yeah, I'm back on the bell machine. Oh, so we're not on. Yeah, it, it, inside of the. Head note, it is mounted into OptCord. Um, is it mounted or is it just copied? It, just copied. it, depends, on it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. Um, for development builds, it's a mount, but for production builds, it's a copy. So, Cord in the box is a copy. Cord in the box is a copy. We're working to eliminate that because we've had a lot of problems where people put words when, when it doesn't match up. So, yeah. So like here, for example, is our big list of uh, all of the services that XOS um, is able to bring up. So this is just a little tour of where you will find stuff in the, the repo hierarchy. Um, you can, at your leisure, poke around in there and, and look at the existing services or the XOS infrastructure, etc. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to actually move on with the meat of the tutorial, which is to onboard your service. Um, so we hope everyone has that link um, open in their browser, because we're going to be cutting and pasting uh, some stuff from that page into your... Um, okay, done. Don't leave that page. Hmm? We're talking about the... The HTTPS uh, goo.gl slash... <coughs> yeah, we kind of realized that yesterday this would be a lot more convenient if we had you know, two screens up there. Yeah. Um, so I happen to have that document open in here. Uh, so we're going to be working with a service called Template Service, and Template Service is a service we've set up that's kind of minimal scaffolding in place, uh, so it does absolutely nothing useful, but it's kind of a starting place for you to implement your own service. Um, normally, when beginning your own service, you would write an Xproto file. Uh, you would run um, XOS Gen X to generate um, your synchronizer stuff from that file, and then write your onboarding recipes and and such. You know, just for expediency today, we've provided you with template service as a starting point. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to modify the Xproto modeling for template service to add a couple new fields. So this is on the uh, on the Bell machine, so we're not inside the uh, Headnote VM, we're on the Bell. Um, what you're going to want to do, this is where I told you you're going to be doing lots of cutting and pasting. You're going to want to go into, this is inside of that XOS services directory, the template uh, service, it's XOS subdirectory. Go inside of there. anyone having any issues getting into that place? Okay, so Orchestration XOS Services has a list of service directors. We're going yep. to the template service directory. Service and the template service instance. Yeah. 
And like I say, you can either cut and paste that line, or you can just wipe the whole thing and, and cut and place the whole thing in this place. I'm going to do that myself real quickly. Okay, so I'm not slack. Slack. This is not going to work. What happened? You can use nano. Oh, you don't like VI? I don't normally use VI. Well, I should try. I should try what I normally use, but it's not work. So uh, Max. Service that expert. Scott's using Emacs. I'm using Emacs. I think somebody had to use Emacs. I thought he was a VI guy. So tell me Emacs is not installed up yet. Oh. There it is. Oh. Yeah, so here um, I'm going to make the same changes that I'm asking you guys to make. Oops. Actually, I have to cut the page So option app label. Uh, an option name are still there at the top, so it's not a complete wipe of that file, right? No, it's not. Go. You're actually just adding a line to each one of those um, uh, stands. Those are the top. You're right. Go ahead. This is what example service is supposed to be. It's the start. So we're pretty much is turning. This stripped down. Yeah, we're turning template service into example service. Because example service came with some, you know, it came with this stuff already done. My latency to uh, Cloud Lab is terrible. When that happened, it's terrible. You type and you have to wait a few seconds to see what's going on. So there, I have I have modified my X proto. Um, this is what your file should end up looking like. Does anyone need any help with that? So you're not explaining. No, I'm assuming um, you guys have watched the other talks that give you some background in x -Proto. I can give you a little bit, um, you know, as I said, each one of these is a model in the data model. Um, you do inherit, so this model, template service is inheriting a bunch of fields from the service model. Um, so there's really many more fields to your model than what is just here. But these are only the fields that we have added um, for example service. Um, this one's adding a string field called message, um, a message to display. It's got a maximum length. Um, you cannot uh, set it to null. It's not indexed. You cannot leave it blank. So you basically have to um, enter a value for that field. Template service instance, we're also creating a field in it called message. Um, because these are different models, uh, there's no conflict between the field name, each model can have uh, whatever fields it wants. So what we're going to end up with is the service is going to have one message and the service instance is going to have a message. And then our example template service when we're all done is going to generate you a web page that is made by composing those two messages together. That's going to be our little demo. Is everyone uh, having a good time um, entering this, this stuff? I'm done. Okay, good. So I'm saving that. Back to the document. So we've updated the modeling. Our next task is going to be to uh, update the synchronizer. So modeling is what we store in the data model. Uh, the synchronizer is how we take stuff from the data model and apply it to the underlying service. In this case, the underlying service is going to be an Apache web server running in an instance. Um, so for some PNFs, um, the configuration method is to SSH into the instance, uh, write some configuration files, and then run the software. So example, for example, um, write a web page, write Apache config files, and then start Apache. Um, our VNF image that we're using today is going to come with the Apache binaries already loaded into it. Um, we will write an index 
.html file into our, uh, our VM, and uh, then we will start Apache. So we're going to go through the steps in how to build out this simple synchronizer. Um, we do have a document that you can follow this link, which would give you an in-depth guide to writing more complex sync steps in the synchronizer. Uh, but right now, let's just do these uh, simple changes. So first thing we're going to have you do, um, you're still in the, the um, services slash um, template service slash XOS directory. You're going to run make dir synchronizer slash templates. And then you're going to change dir to synchronizer slash steps. So right now, you should find yourself inside of the synchronizer slash steps directory. Um, you'll see when I listed the directory, there's a couple files already there. This would be an Ansible playbook and a Python file. The Python file is going to be responsible for taking state out of the data model and converting it to Ansible variables. Then the Ansible playbook is going to be responsible for taking those variables and using them to configure your BNF. So what we are going to have you do is to modify the playbook. So you're going to want to edit service instance underscore playbook.yaml. Open that in your favorite editor. Uh, you'll see it does not look like this yet. You need to remove a few things and then modify it to look like this. You're basically going to add that block, the variables and the tasks. I just got hosts. And it got a near empty tasks. Yeah, right now it should just come with like a pain task in it. Gather facts now, so writing variables and tasks. So these two here are variables that are going to come uh, yeah. from the data model. Uh, they're going to get transformed to Ansible variables. So um, service instance underscore message will be the message from the service instance model. And then service underscore message will be the message field from the service model. Okay. Putting those in these two Ansible variables. And then we're going to do uh, two tasks. The first task is going to be to create an index.html file. And um, I'm going to have you edit that in a moment. But that's going to use a Jinja2 template. It will apply those two variables and create var www.html index.html. And then the second task is going to be to start the Apache web server. No, the synchronizer framework, it figures that out for you. So it uh, computes the instance name and it sets up the SSH connection and the host file and like a little stub of a config file that has any additional SSH stuff. So it will manage the SSH into uh, the instance with this playbook. Um, it's actually hidden. The Python file is going to be relatively short because we're leveraging um, code that's shared amongst other steps. So you, you inherit a lot of code from the synchronizer framework rather than having to write that code yourself. So you won't actually see where there's a function that says, you know, run the Ansible playbook. It's 
buried in XOS, and I can I can give you a pointer to where to find that code inside the synchronizer framework. So you've got the um, double brackets using the variables from the data model, where it uh, says X service instance message. Yeah. And service message. Mm -hmm. How did you know those are the names of the variables from the model? So. This one here is coming from some of that inherited code. Yeah, no, these, the things. these two. Um, we're going to show you that. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't have known that already. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're going to edit the Python file after we use the Ansible template. Um, anything else to say about this? This is a Jinja 2, which is, is kind of a little bit weird. This is a Jinja 2 template you have to use in Ansible playbook. So these are Jinja 2 substitutions. Yeah, right here. Yeah. I didn't know where you got the variable. Yeah, yeah. But you'll see you'll see where it gets packed into a dictionary. Yeah. Well I think I think maybe they're finding the second second projector, so we'll have that for the, the next session. Let's see, I need to copy this stuff. So I'm going to do the same edits that you guys would have done, which is to get rid of the old tasks, paste in the new variables and the new tasks, and then save that file. Yeah, we're not quite ready to look at that Python yet, but we're getting there. Our next task is going to be to create a Jinja2 template um, called index.html.j2. And that is the template that is going to take those Ansible variables, um, that was kind of in that variable substitution that was up there, and take those two Ansible variables and put them in a file. So this is going to be a web page that will be served by the web browser. Oh. So can, couldn't you... Auto generate the Jinja 2 as a target. The templates. The so this this portion of it, the the, the web page template. You mean this part up here? No, the next thing. This that, thing. That, that, I don't. That's so you, the output from the. Yeah, this is the output. This is that's what what, so what the I developer mean. wanted to appear in the web browser. So so, so, so think about like a conf if you had a normal BNF, that might be a config file. It goes into your VNF and it specifies um, the settings for the VNF. Um, so it would be whatever format the VNF wants. Okay. Um, but Digit 2 just lets you fill out a text template file. All right, so you're right. It's, 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 it's still right. on the back end. Yeah, yeah this is Sorry. dependent on the particular VNF, I whatever this is. This is right. I guess what we would call the interesting parts of implementing the service this is where you're actually configuring your VNF. All right, so. Sorry, so we are back. Wait a minute. Dot you have to that, yeah. Temp, dot dot slash template slash index dot html dot j2. Bless you.
save that now we are going to modify uh, the sync step so you're going to edit the file uh, sync underscore service instance dot py that should be in the current directory and we're going to modify this function called get extra attributes um, I'll show that in a moment when I open it up. You'll see that the synchronizer framework will have already given you one of these, um, but that it is going to need uh, this additional stuff put in. I'm sorry, that's back in the sync. That is in dot dot sync. Yeah. Because I just moved over into the template. Yeah. See, that is in this directory here. That's chord orchestration, XOS services, template service. XOS synchronizer slash steps. So, and that is sync service instance.py, a Python file. I just, we were in the sync directory. We went to the Tim, like yeah. we came back to the sync directory. Yeah. Just, yeah, you kind of have to move around a little bit because Ansible puts by default different files in different places. Your templates go in one place. Sync steps go in a different place. Yeah. Um, so here, you know, here we're into the actual Python implementation of the sync step. Yeah, you see this is a Python class. It's called sync template service instance. So that is implementing the sync step for the uh, service instance of template service. It is inheriting a class called sync instance using Ansible. And that class has all of the complicated bits in it that know how to run an Ansible playbook and run it on the proper SSH channel with the right IP address and everything else to get into the instance. Um, inside of here, uh, we can see some things about this sync step. So it is providing template service instance and it is observing template service instance. Um, those are the two linkages that hook it into the synchronizer framework. So what it does is it watches for changes in this one, and I believe it marks that one as synchronized when it's done. Uh, Sappin would be the expert on those two fields. Uh, there's a requested interval. Zero means just run this as often as, as you can. Template name, this is the name of the Ansible playbook. Uh, we just have to edit that one. Uh, there's a key name, which will be the uh, private key that the framework uses to SSH into um, the instance, and a little helper function, and then we're down here into uh, get extra attributes. And this is the function that I asked you to replace. So what we've done, and John, this is the part you were asking about, that yeah. takes, takes the stuff out of the data model and it put it in those particular Ansible variable names. So it's being passed to service instance, that's this O argument. So it's getting O.message and calling that service instance message. Uh, then it is finding the service that goes along with this object, which I think it turns out to be just O.owner. That's kind of a long way about doing that. Uh, so it gets the service, and then out of the service, it gets the service message and sticks in the service underscore message um, Ansible variable that returns those fields. So this is what the synchronizer framework will pass to that playbook. So, oops. All right. So I, I did this in slightly the wrong order, is that right? No, I reordered I, it. Oh, you reordered I it. I reordered it so it made more sense. Okay, okay. that so. works. You fixed it up for your session this afternoon. Right, so, so, it's, so it's, I made it so you edit both things in the service directory, right. then you make Good. the template. Good. Okay. See, this shows just how tight the XOS team 
development loop is. While we're doing the demo, we're making the next demo better. <laughs> he, he is the auto test. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we, we, we've set up your modeling, we've set up your synchronizer. Um, now we need to get this integrated with the build system. So we have profiles in the build system. Um, profiles tell you how to bring up um, a deployment of cord. Now that might be a cord physical pod, that could be a virtual cord pod, um, that could be a local mock configuration you're using for development. Um, let's go into the profiles directory and look around. And not Slack. So inside of Profile Manifest, these are all the things that the build system knows how to bring up in, in this particular checkout that we did. So it knows how to bring up um, eCourt Global. It knows how to bring up eCourt, this is eCourt Local, a front-end configuration. There's some mCourt profiles it knows how to bring up. There's rCourt, Open Cloud. And over here is BaseCourt. That's the one we're working with today. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to edit that file in there, basecord.yml.yml. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you uncomment and or modify a series of things. So the first you're going to do is find something under XOS services uh, that looks like this. Um, it'll Thank you, Zach, for making the next Sorry. iteration better. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I realize this is technically out of order as well. No, this I didn't change this one. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, thanks someone else. This is this is why we give people the live document link during the demo. Um, All right. So yeah. where are we again? Yeah, we're we're in uh, basecord.yaml. You're going to find a block that looks like this. It'll be all commented out. Uh, you're going to uncomment that much of it. Yeah. Don't uncomment the first line. Or you're yeah, gonna... don't uncomment the thing that actually is supposed to be a comment. Um, so, Emacs, basecord.yml. So, not that commented block. Uh, I've seen <clears throat> There's a couple commented blocks. Yes. You want this I see, particular one. I see the Tosca one. Which one are we doing? We're doing this one here. It's under XOS underscore services. Um, and this is an example of adding a new service to the profile. Right. There's three comments to delete. Name, path, and key pair. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, it had a particular checksum and it had a particular name. So let's get rid of that. And in its place, uh, put this one that says, uh, we want my VNF image. It's also located on vg.org. And it has, uh, hopefully, a different hash with it. I predict vg.org will crash. <laughs> At some point in the near future, but not today. It's, it's been a trooper. It has been. Save that. Um, we actually have one more thing to fix up in there. Um, so what we've done at this point is we've, we've told the build system to bring up the service. Uh, we've told it what image to install, but we also need to tell it to run a YAML recipe that will instantiate um, sort of sample data and, and the service. Um, so we need to tell it, we need to uncomment this other commented out block, um, which will tell it to run the right Tosca recipe. So let's go find that. Is this block right here? So, um, where is XOS new task for config templates like the thing that I would have? So, the way that um, the way that this works is the profile in um, the profile. Manifest file here is you included as a variable when the Ansible playbooks are run. And one of the roles, uh, specifically the uh, uh, core config role or uh, the core profile role, um, uh, uses these variables to generate uh, these template files and copy them into the right place and then oh, iterate them. The other thing is there's two Tosca entrants and they'll go to the new one. We're now using the new one. That's why the new came from. So that's why I just wondered why you didn't add it to the previous block. Yeah, so that is the you old Tosca engine. So the syntax. So, so there's a Tosca engine that's looking for this name out of XOS new Tosca config templates. Looking for a list of Yeah. Okay. There's a, so there will be a it's playbook. It's one playbook for this one, or one, one Ansible role. So just yeah. pay attention to that. I wanted to pay attention to that. I was assuming John's question was why didn't you just add the line yes. template yes. service? To the previous yeah. previous list because there's two ongoing places, right? Yeah, there's because two Tosky engines. One doesn't understand the other. The old one was not auto-generated from the next pro that the new one is. I would say this will be gone within a month, maybe. I'm, do you think it's? Do you think it'll be well? Well, I'm hoping it's gone by 5.0. Let me yeah. let me say that. I think 5.0 will have that. Gone. We'll have this chunk or gone, and it'll all be new Tosca, and then maybe we'll get rid of the new. I mean, Tosca. Yeah. All right. I was just. Okay, I think we're finally done editing that file. So for all new services, it comes under the new task engine. So you generally want it for all the new development, we recommend using the new task engine. Okay, so now we're going to go into the template directory where that task recipe was located. Now, if I make if I make a mistake in one of these thirty-seven steps, it's going to nicely tell me <laughs> what I did wrong. There will be some error someplace, maybe some, sometimes some explosions. Different things will fail in different ways. There's no way I'll get this right. Go ahead, drop this. Right, that's the problem. You trying to? I was going to talk to you. Oh, uh, just about the uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come. Just about. This. 30 seconds. Okay, so um, we're in the templates directory. I'm sorry, which templates directory? That was dot dot slash role slash core profile uh, slash templates. And we'll see there's lots of templates in there. Uh, one of them is the one we're interested in, which is probably template service something. Yeah, template service uh, dot yaml dot j2. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, Install roles.
Thank you, sir. tell you to do in there is to change all occurrences of trusty server multi nick to my DNF image. And what that is going to do is it's going to tell this recipe to use my DNF image instead of trusty server multi nick. So there should be three of those or so. Um, I'm going to kind of scroll through the file and maybe point out a few interesting things about it. Um, so these are, what you're seeing in here is templates that bring up various objects in XOS. Uh, some of them are by reference, so this is saying um, you want to use a site, and since must exist is true, using that site uh, by reference. Don't create the site, but we're going to use that to link to something else. You know, there's also like some OpenStack flavors, and here's a place where we use trusty server multi-nick. So let's change that one. So, I and my DNF image, in this case, it's a glance image that loads into OpenStack. So we got to change it there, and then we've got to change it here. Now I'm in 
record build. The first thing we're going to do is to tear down XOS. Um, this is going to wipe the XOS data model, um, destroy the XOS containers, uh, bring it all back up. And the reason we're wiping it is because we've created new models in the data model. Uh, we don't yet support database migration. Uh, once we support migration and dynamic onboarding and stuff, you wouldn't have to wipe the data model. So let's make XOS tear down. And that has first cleaned up a bunch of milestones in the build system, so the build system will rebuild a bunch of targets. And now it's actually going in via some playbooks, and it's going to start deleting containers and stuff. The milestones are like the breadcrumbs? Yeah, those are the breadcrumbs. It's, you know, I brought up Vagrant. You know, I copied stuff over, things like that. So now it's uh, stopping and removing containers. This, this, old, this should be done within like a minute, this, this particular step. I think it's pretty quick. Aha, uh -huh. syntax there. Oh, there you see, you wondered where something would show up. I know already. I, I told you I knew what was going to happen. Okay, so there it, it's completed. Um, we'll give you a minute or so to fix your syntax error. If you need help finding your syntax error. <laughs> you just continue on. You've been doing this for how many decades? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay, so we, we cleaned up uh, we cleaned up XOS. Um, now we're going to clean the profile. So the profile is kind of the uh, all of the configuration templates and such that are pushed from the develop machine into the head node. So we're going to clean that up because we have changed the profile to you know use different images, um, onboard different services. So let's make clean profile. That one's very quick because all it does is delete some milestones. Next, we're going to do make build. So what make build is going to do is it's going to rebuild any Docker container images that need to be rebuilt. Um, it's going to rebuild the profile. It's going to copy everything to the head node. It's going to bring up XOS on the head node. Um, it could take uh, as long as 10 minutes. So running make build, and then uh, we can break for a while. We can ask questions. Hey, Andy, we made it to make build. All right. Okay. You don't need me. No. <laughs> We've been having a good time.
to uh, and it tries to download that from Docker Hub. So if we pre-generated the image, you can download a bunch of images and not have to build them all, which saves on the on the especially on the development targets, it saves like half an hour every time you build them. Yeah. Um, it also means that if you change something, it'll you rebuild just the things that you changed. And also if you make changes to some of the other, like the base containers, it'll cascade down and, and force a rebuild of all child containers. Um, there's a lot of work that saves a lot of time in the build system. So do we have a plan to only build the synchronizers that are actually used by a profile? Yes, the plan is that we're going to go through and grab the profile, find the list of sync, uh, the last list of services, and then um, build, uh, use that as a thing to so, um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that in the builder or in, uh, in the Ansible playbooks that generate the yeah. So I think at this point, has it built all of the synchronizer images? Built all the synchronizer images. And is pushing them, getting rid of the old ones, and pushing the old, the new ones into the repo and to the end of So yeah, if we only had to do the five images that we're actually using, it would be a little bit quicker. Yeah, and also, Not a whole lot, but a little. Um, the, the copy step also only happens on full pod builds or virtual pod builds. Um, on development builds, you don't have to copy because the build where they get built and where they're used is the same node. Yeah. I think how long does it take to build like mock or single? Like like twenty minutes or so? Yeah. yeah much faster. It's much faster than it was before. Because what it has to do is, this is sort of the the first 
the, the pre last the previous step is load the um, is load and start all the XOS containers. Then it has to XOS only has to deal with stuff with the data model and wait for databases to come up and everything to be ready and, and initial migrations and other things to run. So it takes a minute or two for XOS to be ready to go. And that's and Chameleon doesn't run until that happens. So Chameleon actually is waiting on XOS. So. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could tell Ansible to say something other than failed. Because this often alarms people when they yeah. say failed. But yeah. when you see that there's and 20 so there, retries left, yeah. you know that someone's been down this path before. Well, I don't like I don't like retries. I mean, I always worry there's something wrong. So don't worry. <laughs> you worry. You worry. That's necessary. You learn to worry. You worry. Trust me. Everything. You will I build a court one so day. It got past it. You, yours got past it, Larry. Yeah. So then the next steps here are to load those Tosca files. So for example, you'll see that it loaded the fixed these these ones, and these are the old Tosca. Then it does, I believe, the new Tosca are next. So see profile config new. Yeah, engine. new engine. So it's it's going to do that that new one we added. You get to check for another syntax error. Or it won't tell me until this point. Yeah, we're working on a static checker. Maybe that would, would. Well, I think it's more for modeling, but. So, the, you know, it's taking and it's creating um, a Tosca recipe, then running that recipe through XOS. So, not until the actual recipe is run through XOS will it actually detect if there was something critically wrong with it. You made it. I made it. Okay, so you made it, and there's another. Yeah, yeah there's another. There's oh. another one. <laughs> um, yeah, the next one is relatively quick, so uh, I'm going to give other people a chance to catch up. Um, how's yours coming, Larry? Mine's done. Oh, yours is done. Anyone else want us to pause so yours can catch up, or uh, yours done? Yeah. Base core XOS UI fell. Oh. Zach will help you debug that one. Yeah, that's on the board profile. But in the meantime, I think I will move on to the next command. Okay. So I guess we could have an hour left. Yeah, this, it could you have to do a new rebuild cycle of something that's yeah. really gone wrong. So you're, you're running that? No. So yeah, I'm just behind. Yeah, so our next step is to run. So when we tore down the profile, um, XOS forgot about all the compute nodes it, it knew about. And it's only notified by them by mass when a new compute node comes online. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to tell XOS, you know, go check for compute nodes again. And that'll be this main compute node refresh. Where is the command? What is this one? Uh, make, make compute node refresh.
relearned about all the various containers that are running. Um, here's the part where it actually ran the uh, YAML that added it to the node. And down here where it actually configured VTN. So has everyone got uh, the refresh from QNode succeeded? So let's take a look at the next step. Uh, so next, so, so XOS has been brought up, the compute node's been added, our service should be onboarded. Now we're going to go into the head node. Uh, right here, we're going to look around on the head node and see, um, you know, is our service actually running on the head node? Should be. Everything went right. So we're going to SSH into the head node VM. Where did we tell it we wanted to run on the head node? Which one of those incantations where... To run one on the head node. Our service. Um, Our service. So when we did make build, it pulled in all that Tosca. Uh -oh. Um, oh, exactly. 68. I've got a bunch of zombies, but I'm also going to yeah. yeah. restart. Uh, you got something wrong? System restart required. Huh. Let's assume that that's not important. The system restart required is just a package uninstalled and things that it needs to reboot. Okay. Uh, so we SSH into the head node. Um, next, we're going to source the OpenStack Nova credentials. So this um, is going to tell it um, how to talk to Nova. Remind me what Nova is. Nova is the OpenStack component that brings up instances. I think I just wanted to cat that. My latency is high again. Show people what all is in that credentials file. Yes, these were all of the parameters XOS set up to tell it how to talk to Nova. Um, by sourcing those, we can now run Nova commands. Uh, so, for example, we could tell Nova to list all tenants. And if everything is successful, we should have an instance up. Uh, my site underscore template dash one. Uh, because that's the my site template slice in its first instance. That instance is active, is power state as it's running, and it has a couple of addresses. It's got a management address and a public IP address. Uh, so the whole goal of this was to bring up a web server inside of that instance. So if that web server is there, we should be able to curl it. And that will be our next command. Oh, you didn't get that? Yeah, so your compute instance um, didn't come up. And we would need someone to help diagnose that if we have any available helpers. Yeah, so you're succeeded. Well, it's an empty message, right? Right. Uh, so could the next step is doing. Yeah, everything succeeded in your playbook. It looked like I'm really charmed. No take thing. I'm charmed. To compute node refresh step was run. Yeah, did you you ran compute node refresh? Yeah. I don't see any failures there. And the previous make bell all succeeded. Well, I guess the next thing I would look at is make sure that BTN looked happy. Yeah. So we may not have time to diagnose what happened. Um, which which node is it? I can take a quick look. What, what machine is it? Yeah. Let me just okay, see if it's... Uh, yeah, and you'll take a look and see if you can see any services that are down there. So, okay, so the reason whether they modify the service synchronizer, 
I, I should not be able to go to GUI and change Yeah, that's going to be our next step. It's going to be into the GUI and change the objects. So if we, yeah, we can't. It's the same GUI. Same GUI as before. Same before. You might have to re-log in because we restarted it. So if everything worked right, um, that web server should serve up a page. There, so there was the template that we created before, and it is empty because we have not yet specified any message in the uh, the objects in the GUI. Did you succeed at that, Larry? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the GUI looking for uh, where I would make this setting change. Yeah, so our next step is going to be the log in the GUI. Um, for the GUI, that's the one that you had yeah, to cat so from a file. Um, you're on the head note looking out. Uh, credentials. And then it should be uh, XOS admin at opencore.org. Now you have the GUI password. All right, so it's XOS admin at opencore.org. Yep. Um, XOS admin at opencore.org. Scott, what was the uh, directory again? Uh, which directory? Where I find the password. Um, opt credentials. This slash is, opt this slash is on the develop machine? This uh, is on, in, the, on the develop machine. It's until they core the core build platform install credentials. Okay, so it's a yeah. right. Till, till the core build platform install. Platform install credentials. Yeah, if it doesn't come up with objects, it's such refreshing. I find I'm on the build machine, home big rig. You're in head. Yeah, so you can see in yours, it does now have a template service and a template instance. Try clicking on instances over here. Yeah, so it did not make an instance for some reason. So I would guess. My guess would be perhaps something went wrong inside of the template service synchronizer. Uh, because he has no instance, so his model policy didn't run, he has no instance. But do you have a node? We'll experiment in how. Yeah. No, he doesn't have a node either. So. Okay, so if you don't have a node, um, did your. Oh, the, the compute node refresh succeeded for him. Or say it did. But yeah, the, this template service synchronizer. It's getting a. Do you have a template service? Can you open it? Top of these <laughs> it's, uh, it says least node and nodes get Yeah, yeah. So it does because it has no nodes. So it's going to be hung up until it gets a node back. Because you see that it's there, so template service. Hmm, I wonder why the compute node refresh didn't work. I don't know, you can check mass and see if mass agrees that there's a compute node. You can also check the juju and see if juju thinks it's there. So, John, where's yours at? Uh, I am at the Nova list all ten steps. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, so you have a tenant. Yep, and it's active. And then if you do that curl command, I have to use you. Yeah, that was close. Should I be able to do that from? You, I do it from inside of the head machine. I don't know if you can do it from the belt machine. So that's public. But it's public in kind of a funky manner. Um, sometimes, well, sometimes it'll try to connect to it through the wrong interface. I think you um, might have some. I have zero slices, zero instances, and zero nodes in the GUI. What? This is in the same state it's in there. So if you go into nodes, there's none listed. You might need to refresh your GUI. So there might be something a little off with the open stack. Yeah, you got it. You got uh, no. So, okay. So now that so, must have been it. So if I go into service. And so you ran the refresh like service. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, did. We'll start with the service. I looked at the log. It looks fine. It looks like it. And I was going to do that here as well. So we can but, yeah, both do that together. Okay. So, uh, so going into template service. Let's look at uh, template services. 
Yeah. It's sometimes the GUI, it, it yeah, seems to get a little bit confused when you're logged into it and you restart XOS underneath yeah, that it. So that's, you that's have happened the before. Oh, that happens, just refresh it. The node still doesn't show up. And we'll refresh the GUI. Template service. Template services. Uh, then we see a list of template services. Um, Can we try running the name? Either the name or the ID, uh, clicking on that will bring you to Template service. Yeah. And I can go down to the message. Yeah. Type hello. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I'll type goodbye. I can't spell hello, right? So here I am changing the uh, service object. Hit save. A green box will pop up that says it was successfully saved. Up in the corner, as well as down here in the status. Python, playbooks, and 
template. So, you know, you could modify the Python files if you wanted to. You could modify the playbook, the roles. It's all part of the synchronizer. Um, in this case, I think we decided it's easiest just to modify um, the template and, and show you how that is pulled in because any of the other files would be pulled in in exactly the same way. Right. Okay. So, Emacs, index, index, HTML. And I've just added a string to the bottom of the template file so that it will be uh, different. Run it through the build system. So right, but through the build system, it didn't refresh the compute notes this time around. Um, well, we're not going to tear down XOS. That's, that's, what, that's actually the part of it. Yeah, so we've edited the file. Um, and how now, did we know I was not to have you tear down XOS? What was different? So, what was different is we didn't change any models. That's the key thing about when you right. have to tear down XOS is if you change the data model because we don't do migration yet. Um, so what this is going to do is we're just going to rebuild the synchronizer container and redeploy the synchronizer container. Uh, so we'll go back to the cord build. Did, did I do that? Someone has uh, replaced the command. So oh, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> um, we, we undo Don't give that. people edit. <laughs> yeah, the next session is going to be so awesome. I, I hit, I hit, I hit paste in the wrong window. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they shouldn't have given us edit permission. I can't get past this one step. It keeps looping back up. <laughs> and then we're going to make XOS update images. So that is going to rebuild. Um, the image. So we modified the template, which means we modified the image. We need to rebuild the image. Um, then do I need to do a make build? Is that that? Yeah. Yeah. So this didn't actually make anything by doing make update images, uh, but what it did is it deleted some milestones. Those milestones will cause um, the right things to happen when we do a make build. And so make build will run much faster this time. Does yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Because it doesn't have to redeploy XOS. It's probably still going to go in and examine every image to make sure it's yeah. up to date. Right. Oh, well, that's a pretty quick process. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't change the service. It has no effect. Now I 
change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you need to change. Yeah, so you need to do the other order. Because if you think step is written for service uh, instance, so oh, then you change service. Yeah, this is not smart enough to know that those are like. That's all. Okay. So how do you make I did it with the opposite order. So what we did in the port subscribers type of hack, every time you save port subscriber, it goes and finds the ESG and saves it. Got it. So it doesn't get triggered by the other one? Or read your ES. Child objects when parent objects. Because the, the service. Yeah, we need to come up with something official for that. Well, the, the other thing is the that synchronizers could watch multiple objects. Not That's not what Staffing wants to do there. Your six step and say, you know, watch for the service and, and the service instance. Okay. And I don't understand this step. Service and service instance or something. But That's fine. Okay, it worked. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Okay, it worked. Okay, good. So changing one of them doesn't trigger an update. Yeah, so the sync step is only written for service instance. Um, so if you if you yes. change service instance, it reruns. If, if you change service, it doesn't. So as long as you change service before you change service instance, it'll see the change. Um, something we know about needs, needs uh, official solution. Possibly SAP and solution where he's going to have sync steps that can watch multiple objects. Okay. But the, I think that for how we model the thing, the service is meant to host uh, general configuration, so for example, uh, user menu password of uh, the DNF or stuff like that. And so if you change that, it doesn't really need to, you don't really need to synchronize again unless you change that particular instance. Yeah, well, it seems like, you know, if you changed a global setting, <coughs> then you would want it to apply that setting to all DNFs. So, you know, changing, you know, if you change a setting in the VSG and you have a thousand subscribers, uh, I mean, you'd better hope you actually wanted to modify yeah, sure. a thousand VSG. Yeah, oh, so it, was this setting retroactive on all existing users, or yeah, I so guess it depends by the kind of setting that you know that's a set. Like if, if, if your VNF is an on application and what you define in the service configuration is the username and right. password for that on you change yeah. those, you don't need to right to synchronize right. those again. Yeah. So this may be like a service specific detail of what happens. And that's you know why you maybe in your sync step you want to write different sync steps that pay attention to it in different ways. Some of them are gonna care or some are the template that Sapana is generating from uh, its problem. I want to generate a sync step for the service. Right. And from there you can handle this kind of Yeah. Thing. That's another way to do it. It can be just can also just be a model policy that anytime you, uh, you touch the service, you just go and pull. Yeah, the that's what we did in uh, something like that we did with the cord subscriber. That anytime you save the cord subscriber, it goes and touches the BSG that's attached to it. Because we had that, that very same same issue. Someone who changed the bandwidth limit in the cord subscriber, it wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't go through so, unless they also saved the BSG. You have to deal with that. Probably the best way to go is the one itself and it's investigating the set of set multiple models from one scene set. Yeah. So we're so very close to done at this point. Now, there was discussion that this was too simple. <laughs> I want to point out we still have five minutes left. So that's <laughs> <laughs> we, could nice. have added, we could have added. Another thing. Yeah. Color. Let's do color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So now it is it has built all the images, it's starting the containers. What did you do? Where are you in this? I'm near the very bottom. So what I did is I so edited sent, the index.html.j2 yeah, in template. To Told XOS to rebuild its yes, images it and then told work. XOS to build. You have to do the what is the difference between those two things? Thing. So the one called yeah, XOS rebuild like, images. What, what do you mean by that? Seemed to go very quickly. All it did was remove some milestones. So maybe it, out, it would be better to call that XOS cleanup it images. Okay. Or XOS okay. dirty okay. images. Because it didn't actually build it. Yeah. It just removed those milestones. So it went very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. The actual make and so when it build now it's it's it's, 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 it's,
so it's so so Okay, so why does it automatically throw those I mean, the purpose of make file No, that makes sense. That's kind of the thing. I don't know if I changed it. Therefore, that would be a question. I will. 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 I Milestones. Our playbooks right. just don't leave. They don't I naturally leave those breadcrumbs around <laughs> for you to be able to know. That well, no, why did I do it here? But it made. might be useful if you haven't done it yet. Oh, oh well, it's updated. Yes, so the, the, there's a doc you can build. build 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 so the the way the build works is that it has built as a taking example of a virtual milestone. Yeah, sure. I
that will get you an XOS up and you can make sure that your XOS interface works. You have all the, mod, all the items you need before you write your sample answer. So we're open for questions if anyone wants or or you, you, you're released and, and you can say you successfully completed the hands-on session. Excellent. Do I get a certificate? Or? You get to keep yeah. your souvenir, your note card. Your note card, yeah, your number. <laughs>